The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. It's summertime. It's the season of hiking. People are hiking here. People are hiking all over the country. People are hiking all over the world. So last year I was in, uh, where was it? The Colorado Rockies for a program, a KMR program. And one day there was a group who was going on a hike and they asked me if I would like to come along. I said, sure, absolutely. It sounded interesting. And I geared up for the hike and there was a tour guide and we asked the tour guide to tell us a little bit about what's expected. And he says, oh, this is nothing. It's an easy hike. It's no big deal. You'll be there and back in no time. Just a little exercise and nice scenery and you'll see God's world and you'll enjoy it very much. The bottom line is it's easy, which was a very inviting word for me personally. <laughs> it it suited my taste buds. And uh, the tour guide meant well. He was trying to ease my apprehension and maybe some other alt, uh, whatever, I, thought, I don't want to use the word, but some other people, they was trying, you know, to, to calm us. This is an easy hike, it's no big deal. But then well, we embarked on the hike, and we began. And suddenly I found myself on a steady, deep incline for miles on rocky terrain. Easy to slip in a moment. And it was in a sweltering, smoldering heat. The sweat, the blood, the tears, the anxiety, the dread, the despair, all converged into one extraordinary, distasteful challenge. Not only did I not trust him, <laughs> not only could I not trust anything he said, something else happened. I realized that it sapped me from my vitality. It was like a demoralizing experience. And I said to him, I said, this is how you do it. That's not how you do it. This is how you do it. You look at the group, you look at everybody in their eyes, and you say, this is a grueling hike. <laughs> this is a tough hike. The terrain at times can be torturous. But I promise you, you can do it. I will help you. I have water for you. I'll be here with you. And by the way, there is wildlife here too. Which was also true. But you know what? I have 41 years of experience on these paths, on these hikes. And I want to tell you, when you do it, your body and your mind will be forever grateful to you, Rabbi YY. And you will discover what you're capable of, which you never knew. You will thank me for the opportunity. It will be a growing experience. Get out of your comfort zone. Get away from the mics and the videos and the WhatsApps. And get in touch with reality the way God created it thousands of years ago. Now, he earned my trust. But it's not only he earned my trust. I know that he's not lying. Something else. He allows me to be fully present in the reality. To be cognizant of what I'm entering into. Even more, he allows me to identify my true inner resources of resolve and courage. I can identify that and I can say, this is what I'm going to be going with. Because I know it's hard. And every part of my body, every fiber of my being, every bone is going to say, no, go home. Lunch is being served. Lasagna. Eggplant parmesan. Iced coffee. And to ease the guilt, salad. You'll have a few vegetables and you'll say it was a healthy lunch. That's the natural way to go. That's where God is in the lunchroom. Come on. But if I can identify and say, I know my body is resistant, but what I need here is real courage. And then when I discover the hardship, I don't have to flee emotionally or physically. I expected it. I knew what it was. When you can say life is difficult, life can become fun. Life can become exciting. Even difficult things can become fun. That hike, that hike, 
Right? Imagine, you ever know, you know these family trips? Remember the old family trips in station wagons? Right? Chalamoya to Ringling Brothers with hard-boiled eggs and pulkas and watermelon. It was before watermelon. We weren't healthy then. Pulkas and hard-boiled eggs and matzah and bananas. You remember? Watching the tigers and the elephants, yeah? And the whole Ringling Brothers, the whole circus was filled with pulkas and hard-boiled eggs on Chalamoya Pesach, Right? And it's a hot day, and of course the air conditioner was always broken those days in the car, even if you had an air conditioner, right? So you tell your kids, we're going on the funnest trip, the funnest trip in the world, you're going to love it. And when do they start complaining? The moment you walk into the car, they're already complaining. Ma, why are we doing this? Why can't we stay home? Taking the whole family on a vacation, it's costing thousands of dollars, but the kids are complaining. You didn't let them transcend the difficulties. What if you make a family meeting and you say, listen guys, this trip is going to be grueling. It's going to be hot. It's going to be uncomfortable. If I were you, I would say, Tati, Mommy, let's stay home and play Monopoly and do marshmallows on the stove. But if you guys really want, we'll be sports and we'll do it. And the kid's like, yeah, 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 we're doing it, right? Nobody will utter a peep. Not because it's not difficult. You gave them the ability to make space for it. It's difficult. And then to choose. You understand what I'm saying? This is very deep. It sounds simple. It's not so simple. You let them accept it so they can transcend it. I didn't make it roll. No, it's challenges. It's true with kids on a Chalamoya trip or on a summer vacation trip to go to some water park or to the Pope, wherever you're going, to be with Hatzlacha and safe. But it's also true with all the big trips that we adults make. <laughs> and they're also grueling. The car is hot. And the situation is hot, physically or conceptually. If you can accept that life is difficult, you can transcend it. You could say, yes, it is. And you know what? Hashem is with me. I once heard from a Jew, Zatayid Some of you maybe remember him. Reb Zev Siegel. Abzef Siegel was a long-time president of the RCA, the Rabbinical Council of America, and he was for many decades the rabbi of the Young Israel Shul in Newark, New Jersey. He has a son who's a very famous Askin and a Rav and Torah Messiah and other places. And he was a very well... You remember when he passed away? He was on a bridge huh? it was a few years ago. He was a very prominent person. He was a renowned Jewish activist, And he worked relentlessly for Jewish causes and communities across the globe. He was a very passionate person. And he traveled extensively for Jewish causes. And I once heard from him the following episode. I think he was a Talmud of Rabbi Yosheber Soloveitchik. And he was a young Israel, a rabbi for many years, president of RCA. And I heard from him once that the Lubavitcher Rebbe found out that Rabbi Siegel was traveling to a certain country. He didn't want to say which country. He said a certain country, which probably meant one of the countries that was behind the Iron Curtain, where it was very dangerous to uh, say anything or do anything that can uh, put you in Siberia for a couple of years. And the Rebbe asked Rabbi Siegel to come see him, and the Lubavitcher Rebbe asked him to undertake what he called a very difficult assignment. He didn't want to say what it was. He just says it was a very difficult assignment. And Rabbi Siegel told the Rebbe, I will do it, and I will get the job done. He arrived back in the United States a few weeks or a few months later, and he went to visit the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And he gave him a report, and he said, I told the Lubavitcher Rebbe, I said, I want you to know that it was not an easy task for Zev Siegel to do. And he said, the Rebbe became serious, and he looked at him, and he said these words, and then I'll I'll translate it to English. He said, Reb Zev, Zint ven hat ir gemacht a kontrakt mit dem Riboiner Shaloylam as ayer leben soll sein gring. Since when, or when did you sign a contract with the master of the world for an easy life? That was the end of the conversation. And Rabbi Siegel said, that that line not only stuck with him for life, 
it actually empowered him in an extraordinary way. Because he often was involved in tasks that were very difficult. And he remembered those words. Where did it say in your contract when you were born, God says, you only easy stuff. (laughs) You only easy stuff. Oh, this is hard? Oh, it's delusional. Oh, I I feel so guilty. I'm a horrible person. I'm the worst of the worst because I feel it's hard. No. Your contract never had a check on the word easy. Never had that. But Hashem is with you. You can do it. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.